I give this my clothes and my projection of myself. I don't, I'm not sure. No, but it's interesting because the thing about architecture, I think, you know, is, is interesting in space. And I was sort of wondering in terms of if you had any kind of unrealized architectural projects, because, I mean, architecture has a lot to do with the unrealized or, you know, the unbuilt. And to some extent, I mean, even someone like Zaha, such a visionary architect like Zaha, mm -hmm. until very recently she had a lot of unbuilt projects. Mm -hmm. Now she can build everything, but like yeah. until yeah. recently it was a lot of unbuilt. And then architects published the unrealized. Mm -hmm. Do you have unrealized projects, architectural projects? Or no, completely. Projects? I've completely like have tons of unrealized projects. And my most unrealized project, my dream project, is my yeah. own house. Wow. My own house, yeah. You and have drawings I, for that? Or? No, I don't have drawings. It's my it's head at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's complete. And... I, I, I think about architecture because and I don't think about even just art itself. I think every, every space, everything I've, I think, now that I've thought about it, everything I've done is spatial. It's yeah. about objects and it's about architecture. And instead of like, instead of paintings, which is like a flat two-dimensional thing, you enter a space. You enter, you enter into, again, you enter into like some, a theater, yeah. like a reflection, as we've gone to, like a projector. You enter like into like, what I've, I've, the pieces, like the clues I've done in the piece, you, yeah. you enter into the negative black space of the light itself, which is what architecture is anyways. It's the sun, like architecture. Yeah. Ar no, architecture, which I, architecture, which an, as an architecture for capitals, really has to be a physical object for me. And it's something that blocks out the sun. So it's like the, it's like a projector. It's like the negative space. So you see it as, as a reflection. And this is the most intellectual I've ever been. Jesus, I'm embarrassed. What do you do this to me, Hans? That's great. I'm Sorry. embarrassed because all my interviews are like <laughs> what I'm wearing. And well, I have and so many more questions. So I can well, we could go on. Yeah, yeah. So is this like a visual thing as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You mind? No, not at all. So I mean, the thing I'm also curious about is in terms of architecture, how your own house, your unrealized house would work, because here we're in your studio, in mm. your club, mm. so everything is white, mm -hmm. and um, with the exception of the club, which is mm -hmm. black. Um, how would your, your own house work if on the, you design yeah. your own house? Can you if, tell me more about your unrealized house? No, I, I would. If I, if, I were, if I were to do my house and I've thought about it for a long time, yeah. it would be in the middle of nowhere, in a, in a field somewhere, and it would be underground. It's, it's almost like when when Zara is like um, she's like the con the um, constructivist or the for the, or the, or the concrete or like my my ideal house would be half underground. It would be yeah. made of concrete, like a bunker and of some sort. It would be like a bunker completely, uh -huh. yeah. And it would be like um, the only time you would see is like light going through a garden, and everything would be concrete. And my ideal house would be like not one main space. And it would be like a series of rooms that I could do things with. An all-white room, a room that's just concrete, a room that's just a tokonoma yeah. with flowers. And I, because I think I'm so, I'm, I'm so introvert and my, my, my house would be this house that's like hidden underground. I mean, what, what's the most beautiful piece of architecture, the most physical? piece of architecture that's the most beautiful in the world. What would that be? The most beautiful thing that's present right now for me. Tadeo Endos. The, the pony he did in Japan. Oh. The, the church he did. I'm, sh I'm sure you know about that. Where you go where you go in a pond and you go these down these steps of steps and then you see this Buddhist temple that's like with, with the light in it itself. So that's the most beautiful space for you? Right now, I've never thought about it, but I, I'm very, very sure that that's probably like the most beautiful space I can think of. He's building so. Damien Hurst's house, you know. He is? Yeah. Really? Damien Hyatt. Do you know Damien? Yeah, very well. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of me and Damien? <laughs> can I, can I switch? Does Damien know me? Switch? He must know me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But why do you mean switch? Can I ask the questions? <laughs> Yeah, we can always switch. How does this work? Does, does it go on forever? This? Mm -hmm. As a moment, we have to charge the battery. Otherwise, it can go on forever. Mm -hmm. I'm having a great time. 
Yeah, well, I'm nice. loosening up and I'm feeling more comfortable yeah, so do I. with I you. It's exciting. And the thing about architecture I wanted to ask you more, yeah. so the black rooms and the white rooms, why is it black and white? Well, people have asked me this all the time. And why is it black and white? Because... It's not because I don't, no, no, because I don't like color itself, because white, because, because white is so, I can't explain it, because white is just, it's not a color itself, white is just, like, white has no, it's emotionless, I mean, you've seen this whole place itself, and everything is like, everything, and if I was spent, as soon as I entered the room, yeah. I would close the door and lock it forever, and I would right. have what was the most basic thing, and spend the rest of my life in that little room upstairs, yeah. and die. I'm not sure if you know about that. And that was the, the basic premise for the, for the space itself. So as if you had, you would spend, it would become like a space to, to live? To live, and yeah. And you, you saw like the little like stove top, yeah. like the little cups and stuff. And in the end, I thought it was going to be functional. And you see, like the little, the little hole in the room. Yeah. And it was meant to be like a, a little bucket, so that if I need groceries and stuff, people would come down, and like move my the most basic stuff. So you could like a hermit. Live Completely there. like a love it, and yeah. then die there. Yeah. And there was, that's pretty much the percent, the um, the idea for the room itself. Mm. I mean, and it's caused a lot of controversy. One of the pieces for the Zavokulits in the Baltic. I'm not sure if you know, the, like what's happening for the, when it showed at the Baltic part it's of the, it. The piece from the Secession. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that he created in England. The huge yeah. discussion. Yeah. Like crazy. But not in Vienna. Not in Vienna. No. Not in Vienna. But and it only happened like two weeks after it was about to close. Yeah. yeah. Which I love as well. Now to talk more about about your unrealized projects before we move back to the uh, mm -hmm. realized projects. Mm -hmm. um, what are your kind of architectural projects? Are you um, your, um, your kind of utopias? Because I mean, the question of utopia is also interesting because you know uh, there's sort of a utopic dimension to the work, and even even in a piece like the Secession, it's a kind of a Gesamtkunstwerk. Gesamtkunstwerk. Yeah, I mean, A. Bronson uses this term also when he writes about your work. The notion of the Gesamtkunstwerk, the total work of art. Right? Ah, yeah, that's what that's what that's what Martina Weinhardt wrote for my next show, Edition Kunsthalle, that wrote about yeah. me. She said that I was the the youngest artist that has been perceived as a Jukoms Kunstwart, the person who does opera pieces yeah. in the whole life and everything, yeah. which is very sweet of them. It's a, it's a small percentage of people that like me. And um, I, think, I think it is because um, what actually, one of my most frustrating things is when people write about me, and it was like, like one village voice critic who was like, I can't wait to like fucking tear Terence Cole apart. And they, and they see like pieces of me and stuff, and I've never seen like the whole the whole thing about me living in my house 